Hey everybody, happy Saturday, how are you? Oh my gosh, yesterday I thought, I, I honestly, I think I did make a Facebook Live video in the morning before I left the house because I was in Long Beach, California yesterday and I looked at my timeline I went, I guess I didn't save it or something, so darn, I'm gonna have to do two Facebook Lives today. How are you doing? Okay, so my subject, as you can see, is ignite your business, or I'm sorry, or ignite your income in a biz in a weekend ignite your income in a weekend I've just decided five seconds ago that I'm going to be doing a weekend where it's all about making money you're gonna learn how to make money different ways in one weekend you can come for the weekend and I promise you if you do what we tell you to do you will make money that weekend it will pay for your event and your time to be there so how many of you who are watching right now or uh, yes are watching right now would show up and invest one weekend of your life and learn how to make money okay I think you would right Susan Shepard you are on the line here would you like to join me in my um, in my broadcast here are you available to join can you test me a little message if you want to jump on um, I would love to show you something pretty cool tomorrow or I'm sorry Monday uh, Justin Womack my good friend and I are doing a social media meet up in, in Canyon Country this weekend and um, we'll talk a little bit about making money too so anyway I would love it if anybody would like to jump on here I love this new Facebook feature so here's my thing so you can make money every day all you have to do is think about make a list actually do that sit down and make a list okay Susan's gonna get on here we're gonna talk about money Susan we're gonna talk about how easy it is to make money so here we go I'm gonna try to find you here um, as soon as she decides to jump on here, we will talk about making money. Susan has worked with some people that um, do events strictly for that. Susan, oh my gosh, what's up with your hair there? <laughs> and why do you have sunglasses on? I just got out of the jacuzzi. Oh, okay. You have your sunglasses on. You know that too, right? Because <laughs> I <laughs> All right, so welcome to the broadcast here. I just got off the phone with uh, my good friend or our good friend Diane and um, you know I decided uh, I've been doing Ignite Your Biz Weekends and we're doing a three-day event coming up in October and everybody I talk to needs to make money. They need to make money and Susan I know that you've been have worked with um, the great Laura Langmeyer who teaches people how to make money. So what can you tell people on our broadcast today about what to do to make money every day? What can you share? Sell every day. Sell what? Whatever you have. Like what? What would be an example? I don't, what if I don't think I have anything to sell? Oh, you probably have stuff in your closet you're willing to throw away. Go out there on one of those clothes five or something like that and sell it away. Okay. You can sell okay. something single day, no matter what it is. Okay. Do you have any other examples? You could and then sell lemonade. You could. We did that as yep. a kid. I used to do that. <laughs> I know. Cool. I what have else? an avocado. My kids used to sell avocados all the time. That is awesome. What if, what if you don't have, what if, what if you're somewhere and you don't, what? If you have a business, if you have a business of any kind, you have something you can sell. Even if it's a dollar, sell something every day. Cool. What if I don't have a thing to sell? Like, I, I don't really want to sell any of my stuff. Is there something else I could sell? But you can sell your knowledge. Really? Like what? What could you sell, Susan? Uh, I can sell a breakthrough session where I teach people what I just finished my Facebook Live on, which is fixing their broken pickers. <laughs> I know a lot of people who need to learn how to fix their broken pickers. What did you tell them? <laughs> I told them that you know, we get a tremendous amount of sensory input every day. And our other than conscious mind, because it cannot handle the volume, puts up filters. And it started doing this when we were little children. So we have a lot of filters that when we were little children decided what these filters were. And they don't always serve us now. So we can change those filters with a breakthrough session. It's really simple. So if you have a broken picker about money or about work or about jobs or about investments or about um, business or about love or about you know laundry it, it doesn't matter what it's about if you have a broken picker about something it can be fixed I mean NLP is a wonderful amazing tool 
and I can fix people with broken pickers in a matter of hours. Wow. So I know there's people probably watching that don't really know what NLP is. Can you give us a little example of what that is or describe it? It's neuro linguistic program. It's a science of communication that was created in the 70s by Richard Bandler and John Grinder. And with the help of Milton Erickson, who was a very serious hypnotherapist. And it's a combination of conversation and hypnotherapy and um, the ability to communicate directly with the unconscious mind. Because in my perception, it's just my perception. I mean, I could be totally all wet or full of you know what, but um, uh, it's my perception that our other than conscious mind is what rules us. And then we justify it with our conscious mind. So really, you know, everything we do and everything we accomplish is, is attracted to us by our, our unconscious mind, our subconscious or our unconscious mind, which it's not that difficult to change it. I mean, you can change beliefs and things like that by doing affirmations. It's a lot of hard work to do it that way, but it's a lot faster to do it with NLP. So you just change the patterns and change the beliefs and change the, the, um, um, the things, the obstacles that are in your way. Oh, if you have a broken it's usually because, especially if it's about love, if you have a broken picker about love, and that means you've had a series of relationships that all end the same way. I have had a lot of clients who've been married three and four times who say, oh my goodness, I start out with somebody and they seem totally different and then they end up being exactly the same. That's because your other than conscious mind is attracting those people to you. And if you go in to your other than conscious mind and change those beliefs and change that attraction, then you can expand your comfort zone and create a different picture of what's available to you as a, as a, um, a partner. Wow. Yeah, you teach that a lot, which is amazing. And I think, and I've seen that happen with a lot of people over and over again. Absolutely. In my case, years ago, when I was, I've been married twice, I was, I married young. Um, the second person I married, I thought was completely opposite, like really completely opposite. And he was in so many ways. But at the very end, what ended up happening was, uh, it was kind of similar. But um, I don't know, you know, I, I purposely tried to find someone opposite. So I don't know. But, but uh, yeah, I see that all the time. That's amazing. And probably the same with money. Like we're talking about money. It's kind of the same thing, right? I mean, how we're, I grew up not really being taught about money. Like we were just young and we, if we needed something, we got it. And I mean, we didn't have any money, but um, it's, it's, I have this, I don't block with money. I mean, I know a lot of people who do. So isn't it similar in that respect? It's very, because we have the beliefs that we created about money when we were children. You know, I know my mom, she used to have a little, um, a little metal box that had like all these little boxes in it and she had labels on all the boxes and my dad would bring her cash and then she would divide up the cash into all these little boxes and each of us kids had a box that was our our uh, our payment box where we got paid for doing chores and things but uh -huh. she also had a box for mortgage and she had a box for electric and all the different bills and she had a box for groceries and whatever else they needed money for I don't remember everything, but but she would put all that money into those little boxes. So I learned about budgeting, I guess budgeting, by having little boxes, so little envelopes of money that go for specific things. And um, ultimately, you know, we we were we didn't have a lot of money when I was a kid. I was the oldest of six, so I always joke about my family that there was six of us kids, and and we are wealthy and inverse proportion is inverse proportion to our place in the birth order interesting <laughs> if you know what that means my brother is the richest and because i'm the oldest i'm the poorest <laughs> oh that's funny so so when you do these breakthrough sessions that you were talking about i mean i i know that you've been really doing them a lot lately um it's pretty fascinating can you give us some idea like maybe the transformation or kind of what that means a breakthrough session how how long does it take what kind of things do you do or can you tell us like maybe what you've done for someone else that maybe it might help some of the people that are watching today sure um 
If there is an element that um, creates a behavior that you don't want, um, there might be a part of you that's, that's in rebellion, you know, that's gone rogue in your body, a part of you that's gone rogue. And so you have a part that's, that's got a different agenda than the rest of your brain. So um, maybe it's um, people who say, you know, they want to they wanna be on a diet, let's say. But then they go out and they eat all the things that they don't want to eat. And they, even though they say they're going to be on a diet, then they go out and eat everything they say they're not going to eat. So that's that, the part of them that's fighting, the part of them that wants to be on, you know, on the controlled eating. And, and, I, and I, personally, I don't believe in diets, but food plans and, you know, eating healthy and things like that. So you can reintegrate parts by, if you take a look at, well, what is it that these parts have in common? Because actually we know that all the parts in our body are always trying to protect us. So that's one way of helping someone integrate the part of them that's fighting the other part. You know, we, we all have parts of us that fight us. Like, I don't want to go out with, um, with sleazy men, but then there's a part of, me I, i'm talking I'm not, I'm not naturally talking about me but <laughs> but you know talking the, the wants to go out with sleazy men about oh well yeah i don't really want to do that i want to find a nice man and instead i'm going out with these sleazy guys instead so you know <laughs> that, that's sort of an example but but it's true i mean i know the people that i coach in relationship you know, they say, oh, I just, you know, I want to find a solid relationship, but they're dating the Playboys, you know. So w where does that get them? Wow. So what about people who um, they they know what they need to do to go out and whether it's get a relationship or, or make money, since we're really talking about money today, that's like a huge topic right now. And it's like they know what they need to do to go do it. They, need, they know they need to get on the phone and make phone calls, or they need to go talk to certain people, or they need to get a coach, or they need to do something. But they're just like, well, you know, I have these things I got to do, and I, I got to get ready for it. I, I, you know, it's, I just let me prepare, and I got to do this, this. And they never, ever get to it, okay? I've been there before. I'm, I'm like, totally guilty of that. So how do you get over something like that or get past well, it? Well, you know, that's stopping them. Something is stopping them. It's one of the one of the things: fear, hurt, anger, shame, guilt, or sadness. One of those things is stopping them. And so you can go back and figure out what, when was the first time you had that feeling of fear, anger, shame, sadness, guilt, or anger? I think that's all of them. <laughs> there's there's like six of them, and you can go back and just fix that immediately and that takes about 20 minutes to do it you just really? find when was the first time and give yourself different resources and change your personal history and go back and re-experience something and you don't even have to re-experience it you have to go back and look at it and say well if i if i had this character trait or if i had this value or if i had this ability to do this thing then i would have had a different result and then give yourself that result, give yourself that, that character trait, and then it'll change your entire mindset. You know, you know how seven people can see an accident happen and see seven different, yep. seven different versions of the same accident? Yes. So that's because everybody has different filters and they store different things. And you have these filters throughout your life. So if you want to change your mind, change your filters. Yes, yeah. Richard, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> so, um, so is there is there a trick or something that w that we could tell everybody to do on their own, or is do you need someone like you to do it with them, or is there I mean anything that we could try to do on our own first? To, to go back and do that, any tricks? Anyone who learns NLP can do it to themselves. I mean, a, a great bit of the value of learning NLP is that you can do these processes on yourself. So, it you know, they're not difficult to do. It's just a matter of learning them. Okay. You know, I need, I need my, I need my, Dick, to hold this steady. <laughs> yeah, I know you're moving all over the place. I put mine on a tripod because I realize I, I use my hands a lot, and it's like then my phone goes everywhere. So, so is 
Yes, I got a my, question. My truck so handle is. Oh, <laughs> so if, would it be possible? I don't know. I'm just asking this. I, I really don't know, but would it be possible sometime to either do um, maybe a Facebook live where we're just like, okay, this is what we're going to do beyond here at a certain time. And you, could you run a process with everybody on my, on our screen here that just a simple one to give us a taste of what that would be like, maybe? Would that work? Maybe. Or? I don't know if it would work for everyone, but we could try it. Let's try it. Let's let's talk, let's talk offline and, and see if we can figure out how to do with that. Because, you know, right now I'm just around a lot of people and talk to a lot of people that, you know, that really need money right now. And, and they're just, it's, it's just so hard because they're just like, I don't know what to do. And, and I, or, or they're in a job. They just hate, they hate their job, but they're like, Oh, well, I need this job to make the money. And they just keep doing the same things every day. And they're unhappy when I can, I'm like, I'm like kind of person. And I know I drive people a little bit crazy, but I'm the one that where I could sit and look at you and talk to you for a few minutes and go, Oh my gosh, you should be doing this. You could make so much money if you just did this and I can so visualize it, but it's hard for me to just, you know, you know me, Susan, you've known me for a long time. I, they, people aren't going to always understand what's in my head, but how do we get them to get out of their own head and get out of their own way and really start opening their mind that they could do more things to make money. So that's, that's our question of the day. It is always about taking action. I mean, really taking some type of action. And literally, if you decide that every day, no matter what, you're gonna take action towards the goal you're trying to reach, whatever that is, you're gonna sell something every single day. Even if you sell something for a dollar, it doesn't matter. You know, if you sell something every day, and you know, most of the people we know are entrepreneurs. Not everyone, but most of the people we know, they're entrepreneurs. And yeah, there's a few people left that still have jobs. But <laughs> yeah, they are. But a lot of those people don't want to give up their job. They don't want to give up their security. I know. But sadly, jobs are not secure. I don't care where, what job it is. It's not secure. It's a security blanket. You know, a paycheck is a security blanket. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, so, yeah, so maybe... I, w I did this once a long time ago when I was like, I, I had sold my business. I'm like, oh gosh, now what I'm going to do and all this stuff was happening. Um, I, I don't know where, actually I found it online somewhere. It said, sit down and you can't, you are not allowed to get up out of where you're sitting. You ha you can't stop and split it into two uh, points. You have to do, so in one sitting, write down, just start writing a list of a hundred ways you can make money. 100 ways you can make money. And what happens, and I'm, I'm sure this has to something to do with this NLP stuff, Susan, but by the time you get through 50 and then it's like, oh crap, I can't think of anything else, but you have to keep telling your mind and you're, you have to finish it. What happens? I mean, I know we learned something. I, I took a little bit of the NLP with Susan, but there's something that happens, right? When you have to keep thinking and thinking. Well, remember that if you ask the right questions of your brain, your brain will give you the right answers. So it, it isn't so much of saying, what can I do? It's like, how can I do this? And if you say, how can I make money today? To your yeah. brain, your brain will come up with this. Oh, okay. Interesting. So that's kind of a game you can play with your brain, right? It's, it's literally, you know, talking to yourself. I mean, we talk to ourselves all the time. But most of the time we talk to ourselves, we're like yelling at ourselves and, mm -hmm. and um, beating, us, beating ourselves up for things that we didn't do. Oh, my gosh. I know. I, I think it was you that told me once because I'm like, ah, oh, you're so stupid, Sue. How can I be so stupid? Why am I such a dummy? How, how could I have been so dumb to make that decision? And it's like, stop saying that because the more I keep saying it, the more – my brain and my in my every that's I'm going to believe that I'm stupid. So it's terrible. So I remember you told me once. You said, "Sue, you you keep telling that why you know why are you doing this? You need to stop it." So now every time I think, "Oh, that was so dumb." No, oh, I'm you know I'm so happy and grateful that I you know something positive, and it makes a difference. It so makes a difference. You're right about that. So. Well, you're giving your brain instructions every time you talk to yourself. You're giving your brain instructions. So when you say, oh, I'm so stupid, your brain is going, okay, yeah, you want to be stupid. All right, I'll make you stupid. 
<laughs> and it's the same thing when you said you're poor, I don't have enough money, I can't afford it. Well, then it's like, okay, that's what the universe is going to think. Okay, fine. You don't, you can't afford it. You don't have enough money, right? What you say is, how can I afford it? Ah, I like that. Then how you can I find the money? How can I find the money to take care of this? How can I... Um, how can I alter this situation? How can I make a difference in people's lives? How can I do whatever it is you want to do? And when you ask that, how can I, with the right questions, your brain will give you the right answers. And that's what I heard, that your brain cannot not answer a question, right? I mean, it just can't help it. Yeah? That's right. Yeah. And you yeah, and what is the thing about the pink elephant thing? <laughs> Do not think of a pink elephant. <laughs> Just try. Try not to think well, of a whole, pink elephant right now. Don't think of it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> the whole thing is the brain doesn't understand not. Ah, okay. So if you say, I don't want to do something, it's, it doesn't hear the don't or not or never. It doesn't hear the negative. It only hears the content of what you're saying. So that's like when you have little kids and you say, don't touch that, they're gonna touch it. You should say <laughs> something different. Don't say that, right? <laughs> because, oh, I think you're frozen. Shoot, you're frozen. If I'm still on here, maybe I'm the one that's frozen. Anyway, um, yeah, your brain cannot not, or can hear not. So I don't know who can hear me. So can someone say something? Um, I think we got Susan frozen. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and shoot. Darn it. We're going to have to wrap her out of the picture. So um, I think I'm still here. I think you guys can still see me. But anyway, go out there and think about positive things. Think how you can make more money. Don't say that you can't afford it or you don't have time or you got to think about it or you got to do this, that, and the other thing. Forget it. You actually have to do it. And don't use that word. See, I said don't. Instead, let's see, I have to turn that around. Go think about how awesome you are and how capable you are and how you can go out and do anything you want to do in the world and sit down and write a hundred ways that you can make money and how you can do it. Think of how you can do it. Have an awesome day. I'm bummed that we lost Susan, didn't get to say goodbye. So um, have a great day and I will talk to you guys very soon. I'm gonna let you know about my Ignite Your Income Weekend coming up in October. See you soon.